Hello and welcome to Real Reviews. This week's reviews are brought to you by the film Gordon.com. Experience film through the eyes of a true film addict, yours truly. I am Tim Gordon, editor in chief of the film Gordon.com. And on this show, we discuss my views of upcoming films. Now you can also read or listen to past reviews either on thefilmgordon.com or at our new home at spreaker.com, Film Gordon. Now this week we wanna talk about Soul, which is a computer animated comedy drama which tells the story of Joe Gardner, a middle school music teacher played by Jamie Foxx, who has, a lo has long dreamed of performing jazz music on stage and finally gets a chance at, after impressing other jazz musicians during an opening act at the Half Note Club. However, an untimely accident causes Gardner's soul to be separated from his body and begin to proceed to the great beyond. And Gardner manages to escape to, be the, to, to, escape to the great before, a world where souls develop personalities, quirks, and traits before being sent off to Earth their gardener must work with souls in training at the great before, such as 22, played by Tina Fey, a soul with a dim view on the concept of life in order to return to Earth before his body dies. Now, this film, of course, is produced by Pixar, which can, in my eyes has done no wrong and can do no wrong. Uh, of course, it's distributed by Walt Disney, and is directed by Peter Doctor. We'll talk a little bit about him a little later on, as well as co-written by Kent Powers, who also has written One Night in Miami, which we've also previously reviewed. Uh, the film stars the voice work of Black Reel Award and Oscar winner Jamie Foxx, Tina Fey, Questlove, Felicia Rashad, David Diggs, and of course, Angela Bassett. Now, this is a movie, I, I'm going to talk and be very transparent today, that I came into this story with lots of expectations. As I said, in my eyes, I've watched Pixar films, and outside of the Cars franchise, everything that Pixar has done to me works splendidly. They are amazing uh, at balancing the humor in their stories with more adult-oriented issues, which make those films universally loved because they appeal to all ages. And when I went into Soul, I was looking for that, uh, that kind of blend of what I'm, I'm accustomed to from watching it. And I must admit, I was taken aback. Um, the first time I watched the film, because I subsequently watched it again and had to change my opinion, I was a little disappointed because I really didn't understand who the audience for this film was. It clearly to me didn't play that it was for younger viewers or children or teens and it also played like it was so extent i can't pronounce the word but i think it's existentialist that the the film played above the heads of adults as well so my apologies and i'm sure i'm going to get emails about being teased for not knowing the word, but I know exactly how I can spell it, and I, know, I just can't pronounce it, but the film played as if it, it really got away from its roots. Now, the film, of course, you heard me say is him being a musician who's a piano player, who loves jazz music and longs to play jazz, and instead of the film staying in that realm and dealing with that, it kind of goes off into this kind of discussion of the great beyond, the great before, life, death, which are all wonderful topics, I think, in a feature film. But in, a, in an animated film, especially this type of animated film, initially, I didn't see how this could work. Um, I think the film picks up more momentum in the second and third acts as they bring the story home. But my initial viewing of the film is that I thought the first 30 minutes bogged this story down. Then I went and did some research and discovered that this film, of course, is, is, is directed and, and co-written by Peter Doctor. And Peter Doctor is the guy that if you watched a lot of Pixar films, he's written Toy Story, Toy Story 2, Monsters, Inc., Wally, 
up inside out. So some of the most mature themes that have come from the Pixar universe or from the mind of Peter Doctor. So thinking of it in that way and thinking of Peter Doctor's, Peter Doctor's film work, it makes a little more sense of where he's trying to take this original story. Now, I understand that Kim Powers, who also they brought in as a co-writer, probably comes in and brings a lot of the jazzier music elements to the character. Um, if you've seen One Night in Miami, you can see that there's a certain pulse to that film and you can pick up inside a soul the elements that Powers probably contributed to this screenplay. Um, but upon second viewing, I think this film plays much better if you don't go in with the expectations of thinking of it as an animated film, that it's a film for children, and that you go in and, and absorb the story for what it actually is. And, and what I see is that Jamie Foxx, who has become the first African-American lead uh, who's doing voice work in a Pixar film, plays this character and gives it so much empathy um, not necessarily the empathy of, say, playing Ray Charles and Ray, but his voice work in this film really gives you, it makes you wrap your arms around his character because here's a man who really is immersed in a thing that he wants to do. We see at the outset that he's teaching music class in school and he, he's very unfulfilled. You know, he's feeling pressure from his mother, voiced in this film by Felicia Rashad, who is putting pressure on him to, to keep a job, kind of crush his dreams, and he wants to fight against it. Um, he gets the chance of a lifetime when a former student invites him to audition for uh, Dorothea Williams, voiced by Angela Bassett, who's a saxophonist, and as a part of her trio, or her quartet, excuse me. And suddenly, just as he's about to get that opportunity, you know, things don't go as planned. And we feel him trying to get back to his dream and trying to live outside the box of what others think of him. So you have that element in the film, which I think is expertly uh, done by Doctor and, and Powers in the, in the screenplay. You also have what I think is, and, and, and I will say that even after multiple viewings of it, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around the great before, great beyond aspect of the story, which I think, in my estimation, took up too much time in the film. And that if we would have stayed with more simpler themes in the film, I think the film would have probably been more entertaining. But Doctors and Powers clearly have a lot to say in this film. Now, this was a film that initially was supposed to have theatrical release, but because of COVID-19, is now going to go to Disney Plus or it'll be distributed on, or, or shown on Disney Plus on December 25th. Um, it's a film, as I said, you know, I'm very transparent in trying to explain it because it was a film that, and it happens often, but I don't really have it happen where I see a film multiple times and feel different ways about a film and watching it. It doesn't happen often. Or, in, or let me rephrase that, it does happen. It usually happens spaced out over time after a film has had, I've had a chance to really absorb a story, but I'll watch this film because it's a film that I've really anticipated and wanted it to be good. And despite the fact that I initially didn't, it didn't work for me, after watching it a second time I, and understanding the, the creators of it, to me, as I said, I would give this movie a B. I think it's a story that if I were making it or if I had uh, input on what I would have done, I, there would have been certain aspects of the film that I would have cut out in order to make it more enjoyable for me. But at the end of the day, the audience is about, it's, it's about the audience, it's not about just Tim. So for Tim, Tim gives it a B, thinks it's an ambitious story, I think it adds to Peter Doctor's legacy and his work at Pixar and of the types of stories that he tells. I think Jamie Foxx's voice work is absolutely amazing. Felicia Rashad and Angela Bassett, as well as um, Davi Diggs, Tina Fey and others, I think contribute amazing voice work. Um, I would have loved to have seen this as a theatrical release to see how it would play with 
families, not just at home, but in theaters to see what the reaction would be. But I think this film has a lot of soul. And Jamie Foxx, who I think is one of the most talented actors of his generation, uh, brings it home. He is a credit. And it is far from a failure. Uh, not my favorite Pixar film, but it is far from a failure. So, a B, really good film. Catch it on Disney+. Plus. It drops on December the 25th. And that's my real review. You guys enjoy, and as I tell you in closing every week, please see something good at the movies. Soul is worth your time. You take care. Enjoy your day.